Today, we're in the Eastern region at Sandro's office in Peter Maritzburg. We'll be speaking to Sumit Kasajan, who's the project manager for Sandro Eastern region. Congratulations. You have newly been appointed the South African Institute of Civil Engineer of the Year. Now, what does such a prestigious award mean to you? It's doubling. It's, it's, it's truly an amazing feeling. It, it means the world to me. Um, SICE being the learned institution of, of uh, civil engineers, engineering, it's um, a remarkable feeling to be honored in that way. Um, the, you know, the finalists in the category are, are doing such amazing work out there and to be the winner is really a surreal feeling. So I'm, I'm really adjusting to it, still getting used to the idea and yeah, I'm really honoured. Congratulations again. Now, obviously, the judges take into many factors when it comes to their criteria. But what would you say for you was that one project that really made you stand out and put you to the test? I think, you know, it's, it's been the steady contributions over the years, uh, steady small contributions over the years, but if I were to pick uh, one project, it would be the N3 Package H project that I worked on as an assistant engineer. There were several technical challenges we, we had, were faced with and had to resolve as a group. And in, in doing our work, we're able to give back at the same time. So. I think a lot of good care has come out of the project. It's still on the ground, uh, and I think that more good will come out of the project when it's uh, un when it's finished. So, yeah, I would choose that project. Now it all sounds so exciting and also very complicated. I heard a birdie tell me that you are currently managing so many different projects with a portfolio of about a billion rand. How do you manage such a workload and what would you say it takes for you to actually be able to carry it out? Um, yeah, it's, it's, it is a challenge, but the first thing that I've done is to try and understand Sandal um, system of procedures. What are the whole points uh, in, in the procedures to get the project out and then prioritize. I've been truly blessed in that, uh, you know, the experienced project managers have given me guidance, have supported me when I faltered a bit. And, you know, it's, it's truly been a learning experience and, and there is support there. So it's been a very good experience. Now, you've been responsible for quite a lot of technical jobs, right? One of those being the N3. I think you're also responsible for the Conubia Interchange project. Can you maybe expand on one of those projects for us? Yes, so, you know, the, these projects are mega, mega projects and it takes a whole team to, to provide input to resolve day-to-day -day challenges. And with the N3 project, for example, how do you build a new freeway when there's an already existing one there? You can't close the freeway and start from scratch. Um, you know, there's road users wanting to use the road. So I would say, you know, in the first instance, early on in the project, you know, my first contribution was helping the team understand how the lane shift alignment works. And that's, be, that, that's a term we use to describe, well, the technical term we use to describe uh, the, the phased approach to the contraflow condition. And, you know, I think that is a critical input. That was one of the critical inputs because um, you know, looking back, reflecting back, we, we never had an accident in that lane shift. You know, it's moving from the old carriageway to the new carriageway. And then adding on, you know, um, specifically in the K2 Ridge uh, transition, the lane shift, uh, you know, providing input, my, uh, my input into the uh, layer works that uh, goes into transitioning an existing road, which is a concrete pavement, to a new road, which is an asphalt pavement, on two different alignments, two different levels, and we have this narrow void in between to make up this space. Um, so those are the small types of contributions that actually have a big impact on the job. You know, we're balancing time, cost, resources on a day-to-day -day basis. And uh, these uh, seemingly minor uh, challenges um, are what uh, problems we resolve on a day-to-day -day basis and th those are the things that make the project move forward. So yeah, just a few examples. 
It sounds like projects like these certainly need a lot of leadership. And I know the judges, that was certainly one of the criteria they looked at when choosing their candidates. You've also been known for mentoring a lot of graduates. Why is it so important for you to actually share your knowledge with younger people? Um, you know, it, it's something that's really close to my heart. I believe, you know, I've been fortunate enough to engage with these students coming to, to us for experiential learning. And a lot of them come from a very poor background and they often feel dejected. Uh, you know, they, they've gone through various challenges in their lives and they've, they've really worked hard to, to, to get to a point where they are at the final stages of completing their diploma uh, and, and the graduates that have completed their degree. And, and they really need assistance in transitioning to the next phase. So part of the mentorship is, is getting to understand the technical aspects of the job, but there's an element of mentorship and coaching or life coaching, you know, um, encouragement that they need. And, 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 you know, it's something that really, uh, having worked in, in this industry for quite some time and seeing the impact on society, um, you know, it, it's these that are going to be the future leaders uh, of our country. So, you know, it, it only stands to reason. I'm passionate about it. I want to give back and, and I want to give back through them. So, yeah. Absolutely. That is absolutely amazing, Sumit. And I know another area where you have demonstrated your leadership is working with SMMEs. Tell us about some of the work that you do with them. Uh, sure. Uh, SMMEs, it, 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 you know, my, my, my passion for SMMEs is, is, is a hope that one day these SMMEs that I've worked with and have guided uh, would, um, you know, develop from the grade ones and twos that they are to eventually the grade nine CIDBs that are tendering for central projects on their own and then looking out uh, into Africa and the world and tendering for work and growing in that way. You know, it's, it's a particularly challenging field because there is a misnomer that a uh, subcontract is a get-rich-quick scheme, and it's certainly not that. It involves a lot of hard work. Uh, you know, to put it into perspective, the main contractor would not have profitability if he did not, if they did not um, do the work correctly to the specification the first time. So the first point of contact for me is uh, developing a relationship with this MM SMM. So you often don't have any civil engineering background. And, and helping them understand what is quality, what is a project specification, uh, what is a construction drawing, and, and working with them to build it on the ground. And then when we form this relationship, passing on the knowledge that I've gained through my experience uh, in terms of business management, helping them understand profitability, how to manage time, resources, equipment, plant and material. And so hopefully, you know, I've, made some contribution in that way you know um, recently i i was chatting to one of the smmes and and he's uh, they they've let me know that currently they pour in 30 cubic uh, cubic meters of concrete a day for the v drains that they're doing and it's it's no small feat it's come through a lot of hard work you know it's a small contribution but but a contribution nonetheless Sumit, you sound like a man with a lot of responsibilities. I know that environmental factors, uh, health and safety are also part of your responsibilities. Can you take us through that as well? Uh, uh, <laughs> environmental, health and safety, it's, it's a word in our vocabulary on a day-to-day -day basis, especially if you're working on the N3 corridor. We, from an environmental point of view, there's uh, wetlands or wet zones along our entire corridor, and we have to be careful of not negatively impacting them. We have uh, large stockpile areas that we manage for, for silt runoff, uh, and then we're working with the materials that could potentially contaminate, like a bitumen, uh, contaminate these areas and, and you know, uh, destroy them, essentially. So it, it really is a day-to-day, -day, uh, it requires day-to-day -day monitoring. And with health and safety, if you're working on the N3, uh, ensuring PPE is worn at all times, and, it, and it's really a serious issue. Uh, I've managed our works on, night, on the night shifts, works at night, and you know, vis where visibility is not there, so you have to be seen, and, and we have to ensure our labor and our teams are seen. Uh, for their safety, you know, these are individuals that are supporting families, so we take it very seriously. 
Um, you know, and uh, another thing that was uh, tough to deal with early on is people crossing the freeway or our, our staff on site crossing the freeway and getting that out of the system. It's not part of our work and we have transport systems that help us get into our work and get out of the works safely. So yeah, just, that's just a few examples of what we deal with on a day-to-day -day basis. So, you know, one thing Central is very good at is monitoring traffic flow on, on, on the N3 corridor, on, on, on our national road uh, network. And the need for this project comes from realizing that the level of service we're providing was not really where we wanted to be. And the, the freeway itself required an upgrade. So various uh, methods of improvement were investigated and, and the uh, solution that was opted for was a complete freeway upgrade. And that was replacing, that involves replacing the old for the new. In its original condition, the N3 was a two lane uh, dual carriageway with a wide center median and uh, to ensure that, well, you know, the, the traffic engineer had uh, done a quantitative and qualitative uh, review of the traffic flows and we came up to the conclusion that four lanes in each direction was required to, provo to, to meet the needs of the transport system. Can you maybe take us through your SIC project, the one on the N3 Project H&I? Um, yeah, so... Uh, on the N3 Project H and I, we had our first ever SICE virtual site visit, and look, I, I, I assisted in organizing that. When SICE asked me, I'm, I'm the chairperson of the Finance and Audit Committee, so Education and Training Lead asked to, to visit the site, and this is post COVID. Uh, you know, we were not having site visits anymore, and site visits are a very useful tool to educate. Um, the greater public, but also to provide technical input or, or technical knowledge sharing uh, to our community. And, and so I grabbed it with the, the opportunity with both hands. And, you know, I've been very fortunate in that uh, the teams on Project H and I were, were forthcoming and they wanted to be part of it. So it was really an easy process uh, to get that launched. And then we had the second one this year, I helped with the second one, which was at the EB Clutie Interchange. So we hope to continue this and get the projects out there, get knowledge sharing out there. Uh, our, our, our presentation uh, materials from the first uh, virtual site visit was exchanged with the universities and they're using it uh, in integrating that uh, those presentations into their study material. So that's really great, you know. Sumit, congratulations again on your award and the amazing work that you do. It's quite clear now that you are engineer of the year, you are an inspiration to many young engineers. What words of wisdom would you share with them? No, thank you. Uh, uh, from, for this one, I will steal from my mentor, I'll steal his words. And uh, the first thing that I learned whilst working with him in the middle of my career, and, and he really emphasized what I was thinking was, uh, you know, he said, um, Mr. Brian Downey, uh, he's a former SIC president, and, and he said, you know, we don't do things uh, in a certain way just because we have always done it that way. We look for new and innovative, innovative ways to do things. So, so keep Keep your mind open. That was the first thing that's really stuck with me. Uh, and then the second thing was, you know, when, they, when there's an opportunity to contribute, when there's new projects, always put your hand up. You, you may not have the experience at the time, but you can gain that experience from, you know, asking questions and, and getting the support of your colleagues and your mentors and your coaches. And so those are two really key points um, that, that I've taken through my, uh, through my mentorship. Um, another one from my side that I chat to my students about is when you start working, you know, often a lot of them are earning an income or having an income for the very first time. And I'm always shouting at them about don't go spend your money on buying a car. Let's save to, towards saving for that BTEC. If you're in a phase of completing your diploma, let's invest in yourself first. So for me, that's very critical. You know, Let's set yourself up for your future and your future career. And let's, let's do that first. So, so, so those are my words of wisdom. Thank you so much. I think for a man who's managing a billion rand portfolio, we do appreciate your time. You're a very busy man. But thank you so much. Thank you so much.
that, of course, was Sumit Kasajan, the Sandral project manager here in the Eastern region.